Uh, welcome to those of you who are in the room, and welcome to those of you who are watching us virtually. I am Camille Kalatosti. I'm the Dean for Institutional Assessment and Graduate Studies, and I'm very excited about today's session. Um, this is the first in a series of sessions that we're planning uh, here at Berkeley, so we're happy to uh, connect folks at the Boston campus um, with faculty and leaders in our partner schools, including our campus in Valencia, Spain, as well as the schools that are part of our Berkeley International Network and with whom we have articulation agreements. One of our goals in this session is really just a sharing. It's a chance to share a little bit about the Berkeley curriculum, about Berkeley uh, teaching methods, um, about our general philosophy. And we're hoping that through these sessions, uh, we'll be able to form even stronger relationships with our partners. Um, as I mentioned, some of this audience is virtual, so I cannot see you, um, but I know you're out there. This event is being live streamed and it's also being recorded so that anyone who wants to refer to it later will be able to see it on the berkeley.edu academic affairs website. Uh, we know that for some of our Berkeley partners, uh, you're in a time zone where it's impossible really for you to be watching it live so we know that you'll look at it later on. And uh, we do wish that you could be sharing this meal with us, but for everyone in the room, please help yourself to lunch and feel free to go up and get seconds. Uh, many people have been working really hard to get all of the technology in place and to organize this session, so I wanna just take a moment to thank them. Special thanks to Mary McClory, to Ernie Gillis, to Giles Christensen, Chi Ping Ho, Reggie Lofton, Tim Paul Wiener, uh, Dave Wentlin, and his production team. We're very grateful for all your work. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> We're gonna hear from our presenters in just a moment. Um, and our goal is to finish by about 10 minutes before the hour. So we'll have some presentations, uh, then we'll have a few minutes for questions and answers, uh, and then we'll finish up. I know many people here have a two o'clock class or meeting that they'll be headed towards. Um, in just a few moments, I'll be welcoming to the stage Ann Peckham, Chair of the Voice Department, Diane Richardson, Assistant Chair of the Voice Department, and Rini Pfister, Associate Professor of Voice, all located here at Berkeley's main campus in Boston, Massachusetts. These are three very, very accomplished people, and I'm very excited to um, have them presenting to us today. So let me just tell you a little bit more about them. Ann Peckham is a very experienced educator and singer. She has a bachelor's degree in music from Butler University, and a Master of Music from the University of Tennessee. In addition to her role here at Berkeley where she chairs a very large department and she'll be telling you about that, she serves as an adjudicator for many choral festivals. She performs with the Tanglewood Festival Chorus. Uh, she's also the author of several books, including The Contemporary Singer, Elements of Vocal Technique, as well as a book about vocal workouts. Uh, Diane Richardson, assistant chair of the voice department, is an, also an experienced educator and singer. She has two bachelor's degrees, one in economics from the University of Maryland, one in professional music from Berklee College of Music. She has a master of music from Boston Conservatory and a doctorate in musical arts and jazz studies from the University of Southern California. She has numerous recordings uh, on the music of Charles Mingus, Duke Ellington, African American spirituals, and art songs. Rini Pfister is a Berkeley graduate as well, uh, has a Bachelor of Music from Berkeley. He's also the founder and president of Make Your Life a Musical. He has more than 20 years experience in musical theater and as a musical theater and theater arts educator. 
Um, this experience will become very clear today when you see uh, Rini up here on the stage uh, with his students. Uh, Rini is also the musical theater ensemble director uh, in just a couple weeks on November 18th. He and his students will be presenting an original musical adaptation of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, featuring the Musical Theater Orchestra, which is directed by Broadway veteran Eric Stern, who's also a faculty member. The show is called A Little Mischief, A Midsummer Night Musical. It's over in the Berkeley Performance Center. I'm very excited about it. Um, so, Anne and Diane and Rini will introduce the students who are performing today as well and joining us in this presentation, and I want to express my gratitude to them as well. Please join me in welcoming Anne Peckham to the stage. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here, and uh, I'm glad to be able to speak with all of you today about who we are as the voice department and what we do. To start with, I should tell you a little bit about the department. We are the largest instrumental department at Berkeley at this point. Um, we now have a little over 1,100 voice students who are um, voice principals here at the college. I think guitar is uh, right up there, neck and neck with us. Um, so between guitar and voice, we have more guitar and voice principles than any other principal instrument here. We have 64 voice faculty, and some of those are adjunct to other departments as well. Many of them are um, ear training faculty, and we have lots of other folks who, who we claim as part of our, our very own voice faculty. Specialties that are taught at the college include jazz, pop, rock, R&B, gospel, the singer-songwriter specialty, classical music, musical theater, just about any music style that you can think of is covered in one way or the other by all of our voice faculty. Our faculty members are all professional educators and many also maintain active performing careers, so they're uniquely qualified to guide and train our students in the major of their choice. Many of our faculty members are also experts in vocal technique and several have certification in specific types of vocal training, such as speech level singing, the Lovetri method, and the Joe Estill method as well. We also have folks who do the bel canto style of teaching, and um, just about every um, technique has been explored, um, but we do have specialists who, who are certified in these specific techniques of, st of methods of teaching voice. In answer to the question, what do we do? We train vocalists for careers in performance, composition, education, music therapy, songwriting, music business, music technology, and again, just about anything you can think of, voice principals, when they choose their majors, they're spread out across the college in any variety of um, majors. We as a department place a strong emphasis on healthy vocal production, on learning to manage the voice, as well as developing performance skills, leading a rhythm section, and becoming strong, well-rounded musicians. So it's not just about becoming a vocalist, it's, or becoming a good vocalist, it's also becoming a good musician. So we really try to emphasize that with all of our voice principles. Our philosophy is to train vocalists to meet the challenges of whatever career path they decide to follow. Our goal is also to to train vocalists to be leaders in their area of specialty. We emphasize healthy singing technique, as I said before, as a core part of all voice principles training here at Berkeley in Boston. Now, when I was talking to Camille about what I should mention today and what I should talk with all, you, all of you about, we kind of narrowed it down to three main things. Who we are, what we do, and what BIN and Articulation School um, folks need to know so when they're bringing their students, when they're sending their students to Berkeley in Boston, that they can do the, a really good job of preparing students to have a successful experience here in Boston. So I divided those three, um, three into subcategories of what BIN and articulation schools can do to help prepare their students. Some of the things they need to know, what they're going to face when they arrive 
um, in Boston is, first of all, that they need to make sure that they have a, a high level of musicianship skills. Some of the things that um, all of you who have been and articulation school partners can do is make sure that you teach your students how to write a lead sheet. Um, if that's something that is difficult to cover as part of your curriculum or something that you think your students need extra help with, I would strongly recommend that you go to YouTube and look at David Scott, um, How to Write a Lead Sheet. There's a, he has a whole series of educational videos that are fabulous and I would strongly recommend that you look at that. So it's youtube.com and faculty member, he's a voice faculty member, I didn't say that, David Scott, S-C-O-T-T, -T, and he has the series of educational videos including how to write a lead sheet and I think that's divided into two parts and also how to transition from a lead sheet, uh, from a sheet music into lead, a lead sheet. So you take a piece of sheet music and he goes step by step by step on how to transition a piece of sheet music into a, a lead sheet. Very helpful educational video. So I hope that you'll all be able to check out David Scott's videos online on YouTube. Another thing that is really helpful for our BIN and articulation students to know how to count off a band, how to work with a band, but particularly how to count off a band, um, how to recognize and count off different rhythmic feels, how to improvise over 12 12 bar blues changes, or how to riff over a two bar vamp in a pop and R&B style. So these are all skills that we will evaluate, we will assess when students come to us for their entering student assessment. Um, we, in particular, um, if it seems to me that the vocalists who come to us get a little bit nervous about improvisation, especially if their specialty is pop and R&B, they don't know what to do, they really haven't worked on blues. Um, improvisation over blues changes. So in that case, sometimes we'll have them improvise over just a simple four chord, four bar vamp. So we can hear how their ear leads them through the various chord changes, and that will help us to assess their skills in improvisation, as well as being able to sing over 12 bar blues. But both of those skill sets would be really helpful for you to help your students prepare um, for their entering student assessment when they come to Berkeley. So the first category, as I said, was musicianship skills. If you can help your students um, fine tune their musicianship skills before they come to Berkeley, that would be great. The second part of that is making sure that students are developing strong vocal skills as well. As I've said a couple of times already, we wanna make sure that voice students have a solid core of vocal techniques so they can be advanced placed and be ready for the rigors of singing contemporary music contemporary commercial music. So when students have faulty vocal technique and they come to us and we find that they're not able to support their voice or we see that they're obviously straining or that there's some sort of problem with their voice, it's very hard for us to say, okay, you can be advanced placed into level five proficiency. Um, because we know what comes of that. When students have trouble with their vocal technique and they're advanced placed in, and they get drawn into doing all kinds of ensembles and get very excited about all the opportunities that are here at the college, that's when we run into vocal troubles. We find students run into vocal problems. So we wanna make sure that you help us to help the students develop that strong core of vocal technique so when they come here, they can really um, experience the whole Berkeley program without having that nagging you know, vocal issues come up. Another um, issue is that if we can help students sing with an unforced tone, and particularly being able to control their pitch with adequate, adequate breath support and free of throat and neck tension. Those are some hallmarks. I mean, when you see somebody come into their audition and they might be a little nervous anyway, and then they're straining or pulling with their throat muscles or their sound is, um, is forced and constricted, those are signs to us that that student needs to back up, step back, work on their technique, get the core vocal sound happening before they can move forward even farther into different styles of music. One of the things that was helpful is if you introduce the students, introduce your students to many different styles of music. Teach them the importance of practice and how to effectively practice. Um, one book that I really like that is, has a lot of information about practicing is called The Musician's Way, and I brought it. 
It's a Musician's Way by Gerald Klickstein, Klickstein, Klickstein. And this book has more information about practicing than anybody ever would want to know, but it really breaks it down into how to make practicing creative. So it's not just a, a drag to go into the practice room and get in a routine and, and do all that boring practice stuff and try to get it out of the way just so you can have fun and sing. He really talks about inundating the practice format with creativity and using it as a jumping off place for working on um, repertoire as well. So The Musician's Way, great book. I strongly recommend it. You can see I have lots of, uh, lots of post-it notes, so I've been using this book a lot, but I strongly recommend this book as a way to help your students figure out a good practice routine. Another book that I think is really helpful, and I think it because I wrote it, of course, but I wanted to point out The Contemporary Singer. This is a good vocal technique book. It has CDs for practice in it, and um, if, if you have a, um, a good relationship with vocal technique and have a lot of understanding of it, you can go straight to the CD on vocal workouts for the contemporary singer. This has less of the vocal technique stuff and more of the, the, the most important stuff in this book is the practice routine. Not just the routine, but the exercises, which are with a contemporary rhythm section, I tried to use different kinds of contemporary rhythmic grooves and feels to make them feel like they're relevant to what st our students who are interested in contemporary music really want and need to work on. So um, I hope you don't mind that little plug, but uh, when I'm thinking about books that are useful for students to practice with, I think about those too. So another thing that's really helpful besides making sure that your students know how to practice and uh, to do so effectively or to make sure that you touch base with them on different kinds of life skills that they're gonna need here in Boston. One of the most important things that they're gonna do here in Boston is to connect with teachers and other students for future collaborations and to make friends and develop a support system for their own career development. That's one of the best things about being here, I think, is just making those connections that will help um, support them and not just in a social way, but help support them as they're moving through. They're trying to find musicians for their senior recital. They're trying to make you know connections in the music world. This is a great place to do that. So I would encourage you to encourage your students to make sure that they reach out to other people and connect with other students and faculty. Help your students to understand what it means to be an independent thinker, to follow their heart and their creative spirit but to understand that they don't have to you know, just do what everyone else is doing, to find their path and to encourage them to, to um, be independent with the, the way that they approach their own um, career path. Encourage them to make sure that they, they are experiencing their lives not just as, a, as an audience member, but that they are becoming leaders as well. That they jam with other students that they practice alone and with others. That's a great way to make those connections and to make sure that they feel like they have this network of supportive musicians. It's really important for our students to find ways to manage stress as well, because I think that many of them come to the, the city. Um, I think there are a lot of reasons that, that college is stressful, and some of them have, have a lot to do with the classes and the curriculum, and some of them have nothing to do with it. I think it's that time in many of our students' lives when they have to make choices and decisions and they're feeling a certain amount of pressure. So it is important that you help them understand that it's okay to reach out, to find out where they can get help, where they can get tutoring help, what our counseling center service offers, that they aren't afraid or, or ashamed of reaching out for help, for asking for help from their teachers, from confiding in people who they're close to so they can get the help that they need. This is a very important part of our student experience because I think that, that uh, college can be scary, big cities can be scary sometimes, not knowing what you're gonna do with your life is very scary. So I would make sure that you tell your students that there is help for them, there are resources available to them, and um, they, they have to ask, and we will be happy to point them in the right direction. Please, um, if you have students that smoke, please advise them to give up smoking before they come here. Um, we all know that the, the health benefits of quitting smoking are you know, manifold. There are, there are so many reasons that you should stop smoking. Um, but taking care of your voice and then added with the stress of college 
and the change of weather, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, all these things can kind of conspire to really drag down a student's resilience to, um, to stay healthy and just to manage, manage themselves well. Be sure that students are prepared for the climate and the weather in Boston. Today we have cold and rainy, and tomorrow it might be 70 degrees. So it will change from day to day until it really settles into the cold of winter, but um, please make sure that your students know about these changes and that they have the right kind of clothing that they need and that they're not surprised by um, how, how dark and gloomy it can be around here sometimes. And then, as I said, the next day it might, it might turn out to be a glorious sunny day, um, but that changing weather can, can also wear on your health as well. The home heating systems, of course, dry out the air. Make, when the voices are dry, it makes the singer susceptible to, um, you know, just more wear and tear on the voice. So all of these different things. And air conditioning for some of our students who are accustomed to warm climates where air conditioning is not common in, in all the rooms, that also can be very drying to the voice. So hydration is very important, being aware of how the weather changes, and the home heating systems and air conditioning can also take its toll on voices. And that may sound like a small thing to some of you, but vocalists understand that this is a big part of, of um, what we need to be aware of and how we need to approach you know, staying healthy. Make sure that you help your students um, understand about stress management and good health practices, such as having good nutrition, using relaxation techniques, maybe meditation, maybe just listening to music, finding ways to unwind and to de-stress. As I already mentioned, and I think it, it is worth saying again, encourage them to get tutoring help when needed. Tell them about our counseling center and the services offered that the, and that there is no shame in asking for help when it's needed. Additionally, there are some, uh, it's very important to develop a good routine that incorporates exercise and adequate sleep. I can hear when my students have not been sleeping almost um, as soon as they come in the room, and I think all of you can too. So voice teachers know when our students haven't been sleeping, it's not just the bleary eyes, but it's also the sound of the voice. And so having adequate sleep makes a big difference in the way that students can be resilient, resilient to the different changing temperatures and the stress of college as well. We really want to help them manage stress, prevent illness, and help them to have a successful experience here in Berkeley. And those are just a few things that come to mind when I'm thinking about how you can help your students have a successful experience, experience here in Boston. So those are all my notes for right now. I'm gonna turn over the platform to Assistant Chair Diane Richardson. Diane has been in the position of assistant chair for three years. It's been my great pleasure to work with her, and um, she's awesome. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ann, Camille. Study and Voice at Berkeley College of Music offers group and individualized instruction in all contemporary music styles. All voice principals have at least four semesters of private lessons. Based on the results of each student's placement audition, we try to match them with a teacher suited to their needs. Many of our voice faculty are trained in specific areas of vocal performance. They instruct students toward achieving a solid foundation in order to improve their skills, discover their capabilities, and develop their own style. In vocal labs, classes, and with resource materials, many created by Berkeley voice faculty, Voice students can experiment with other styles that interest them. They can elect labs that offer broader training in vocal styles, rehearsal technique, studio technique, uh, interpretation, improvisation, and performance. From our visiting artists, singers, songwriters, music business experts, music professionals, Students also get firsthand career insight 
on professional performance concepts and methodology. From circle singing to musical theater, Berkeley offers more than 350 workshops and choirs where voice students can improve essential performance skills and techniques. We offer vocal ensembles with improvisation and jazz, blues, R&B, pop, rock, and country. Acapella, vocal recording, Eastern vocal styles, contemporary Indian, and Jubilee Spirit Ensemble, vocal jazz choir, women's choir, great American songbook, Each semester, the Singer's Night Performance Ensemble supports a showcase at the Berkeley Performance Center featuring many of our outstanding vocalists. Voice students are encouraged to take advantage of the numerous performance opportunities available to gain a, a, diversive, a diverse group playing experience and to expand their network of musical friends and colleagues. And now at this time, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Greeny Pfister, and the chorus, Kira Helper, Carolina Magini, and Lizzie Clow. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm here today to talk about how BIN students place and how to help teachers who are working with BIN students coming in. That's specifically what I'm going to do about the proficiency. Now, before I begin, I'm supposed to tell you that we'll use mics today, but of course, for your proficiency, we don't use mics, but we're doing that for the purposes of this recording. Now, the level five, when BIN students come in on level five, some of them may place right into level five. But if they don't, then they may have to go back and do a level three proficiency, say. And in a level five proficiency, singers can sing whatever styles they want. But in a level three proficiency, they'll have to do a traditional, a contemporary, and a jazz piece. So being ready to, be, to do those things if we're trying to check what they're doing, that's why I'm here to talk to you about that and the exercises that go with that. So before I even launch into that, I think it's important as a teacher to model what we want our students to do. So before I even begin, I'd like everyone to stand up. And we're going to just get into our body, as Ann was talking about earlier, and breathe. It's OK, Ann, you can lead. Nice deep breath. Feet in a neutral position on the floor. Ground yourself. Knees over feet soft, knees over feet. Hips over the knees, shoulders over the hips, elongated spine. Keep your eyes open and just breathe in, hands at your side. Just a nice breath in and then a light ah out. Just a whispered ah. And then let the breath come back in. This is just to ground you and get you in your breath. Again, and a nice light ah out. Not too heavy with that ah, we're not trying to call Harry Potter from the Chamber of Secrets, we're just nice little ah. One more. And let's just reach up. And sometimes you might yawn, and that's good to open up the voice. How does everyone feel? Good, so I'll make one more suggestion, and I talk to my students about this when they're in class. When you sit down, and this is kind of from the Alexander School. When you sit down, be aware of your seating and, and sit in a way that keeps you in that breath rather than flop. So let's try that, and I'm going to go on to the piano and accompany myself. So today I'm going to walk you through. Oh, my cast is getting ready. <laughs> Today, I'm going to walk you through some methods I use that are effective for proficiency level three in helping my students. Yeah. Who also happen to be my backup singers today. That's us. Berkeley proficiencies are the way we check to see how students are doing. Level three proficiencies check to see if the student is proficient in 
Different types of songs. Different types of songs. As I said before, the three types of songs that we tend to focus on in level three are what we call traditional, contemporary, and jazz. Within all these are many variations, as you know. But we're going to use these headings as a jumping off point. I think the most important thing is choosing the right material. Let's get it right. You'll notice when I share songs today that many of them, the examples will have the title up front. That's just to help you remember the songs from this particular demonstration. Please don't think that you have to have all your titles up front for your students for, for proficiencies. The traditional song, let's talk about that in the Berkeley model. The traditional song in the Berkeley model has many, many different choices. We don't have to go with an aria. Now, if your students are ready to do an aria, if they're proficient in that, great, start there. But there are other ways that we can find a traditional song with the sound that Berkeley is looking for and I'm gonna talk about what those are. Personally, I don't use traditional arias for first through third semesters, because this would be the equivalent of learning how to hurdle and then immediately trying out for the Olympics. <laughs> so I'm gonna talk about three areas, and these aren't the only areas, but there's, first is musical theater. We can find songs in musical theater. That's my specialty, uh, if you didn't realize that already. <laughs> um, the second area is traditional folk material. And the third is art songs of English composers, but as well as other composers if your student has an affinity for a language. So this is a song from traditional musical theater. One dream in my heart, one love to be living for, one love to be living for, this nearly was mine. This near, oh. <laughs> Thank you, I'm here all semester. <laughs> you could find songs like that in the selections from the score it's from, which is, um, South Pacific, and you can find it in the score itself or the vocal selections. You can also find it in the Rodgers and Hammerstein anthology. So all these songs, there's many different places to find them. The Singer's Musical Theater Anthology also are a wonderful series of books that you can find songs in for bass, baritone, tenor, soprano, mezzo-soprano, and belter. There's an amazing assortment, and they come with accompaniment CDs so your students can practice with the actual piano accompaniment. This next song is from Sweeney Todd. That song is a contemporary musical song, but it's sung in the traditional style. So that's why we can use that. Now, as the song above demonstrates, sometimes you can find traditional pieces in other contemporary musicals. This is a very, very um, obscure musical. Some of you may have heard it, songs from it from before. There's a grief that can't be spoken. There's a pain goes on and on. Empty chairs at empty tables. Now you may have heard that song before, yes? Okay, now that song is a contemporary song, but many times you'll hear it like this. There's a grief that can't be spoken. There's a pain goes on and on, which is more of a contemporary pop sensibility. So we wanna watch that we're singing with our authentic voice, our voice, not a voice we're imitating. Another beautiful song from a really unknown musical called Juno by Mark Blitzstein is this song. I've an unrest inside me. Oh, so long I have had such an unrest inside me. And I think I'll go mad. Let's keep it. And I lied, every song doesn't have the title up front. That's called I Wish It So, but I love that first part of that song, so I wanted to share it with you. 
Um, now, for traditional musical theater, some people think, oh, okay, so if I just go before 1960, I'm cool. I can choose a ballad before 1960 and I'm great. Now, for many musicals, that works because there's a traditional sound in the musical. But we have to think about the jazz standard versus the musical theater traditional song. And sometimes people would get tripped up with this and they'll pick a jazz standard and then they're fighting within themselves how to sing it. And I think that's because in our body, in our DNA, some of these songs that I'll give as examples have been sung for many years in this way. And so to try to sing it traditionally is challenging for people because it's in our DNA. Here's a couple examples. Someone to watch over me. All right, so she's singing that in a jazz style, right? You could sing that in traditional style, but sometimes when the student's trying to go there, it's very challenging for them because they, they're hearing it, they've heard it so many times in this jazz style. There are many other songs they can choose. Now, you could choose that, and it's workable, it just needs to be sung as a traditional piece. And we'll talk a little more about that in a bit. Uh, another example would be My Funny Valentine, which we wouldn't necessarily want to hear. My funny valentine. We're used to hearing it. My funny valentine, right? So we have that in our DNA. So I think it's good to think about that when you're choosing the musical theater song versus the jazz standard. The next area of songs is traditional folk songs, and they include... The Water is Wide. The water is wide, I cannot get old, and which is one of my favorites because it's so beautiful. Um, the last category is art songs of English composers, like Early in the Morning by Ned Roram. Early in the morning of a lovely summer day As they lowered the bright awning that the Beautiful. Kira, help. So these are just a few areas, musical theater songs, traditional songs, and art songs. And of course, you can find songs in the wide, wide hit rich history of classical music and opera and operetta, as well as traditional gospel songs, if they're sung in the traditional manner. So whatever song you choose, to, for it to sound traditional, there's a couple things it has to have. Long tones, and its melody will rise and fall and show some range. High and it's low. But there's no need to pick something that's too high and that they're struggling to work with either. So let's talk about this long tone thing. Long tones. Mm, sounds great, but it actually wasn't representing a long tone. Can you try that again? Long tones. So just to be clear, Whatever traditional songs, we have to start with at least finding a piece that has long tones and show some range. High and it's low. I personally use a rating system to help my students find the best songs for them. Because as I said earlier, I think that if we find a song that a student resonates with, they'll fall in love with it, they'll work that much harder. So I use a system one to 10. I'll have my students I'll give them a bunch of songs, have them choose, and if it's a 10, then I know I got the right piece, or eight, nine, ten. If it's a one, not so much. Um, now I'm noticing that it's 157. Would you like me to truncate? Because I can do that. Okay, so I was going to talk about exercises. I'm going to do it really, really fast. The exercises that you have to do do not have to all be classical. They can be jazz exercises. Um, they can be that kind of thing, or they can be traditional vakai.
or they can be jazz and pop exercises like this neo soul exercise. So I will end by reviewing what we talked about. It's very important to take care of your body when you're a singer, to take care of your voice. We have a Performance Wellness Institute here that can help students to do that. And I'm going to wrap up by saying a couple things. We want to find the right material. Let's get it right. And we want to find something that has high and low tones and long tones, which they don't need to sing again, we know that. And the last thing I'm gonna say is, thank you for coming out to hear us and... That's Berkeley Voice. started a little late um, so if anyone in the room needs to go if you have a class at two o'clock please feel free to go we completely understand that um, I want to bring uh, the chair of the department and back up she has something to tell you about where to find the resources thanks Camille and thank you all for being here today I just wanted to let you know as Rini was talking I have um, created um, a sort of shortened version of our voice department handbook specifically aimed at the bin and art schools and this will be all this was in the handout that you received if you're here if you are joining us um, online you will see the link for that I think Mary just posted the link for the the I think it's called the Berkeley International Network Voice Department Guide which will have a lot of the information about our proficiency exams which are our final exams the other thing that might be of interest to you is the voice department summary of private lessons. There's a grid that we've created so you can really see how all the lessons stack up from semester to semester. And um, it seems like there was one more thing I wanted to tell you too, but all of the links for important documents that I think that will be helpful to you will be available on the Berkeley International Network website, web page. And uh, Mary has created the link and put them up for you for you. They're either, it's either a link or she's attached the document. I'm not sure which, but you'll see them right there. So that's what I wanted to tell you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's um, thank everyone again. Join me with one more round of applause. Thank you. And see how amazing our students and faculty are. So we really appreciate that. Anyone in the room, if you have any questions, we'll be around and we'll be happy to answer them. For people who are joining us virtually, please feel free to send us an email with any questions that you may have. Thank you again, and again, a special thanks to our technology team. <laughs>